we left the best for last. Ilya Yudin, manager with Maxar Technologies. Novy Horizonte Geoprostranstvene Otvesli. Thank you very much. Allow me to start. Always fun to be the last to go. I think my job will be to recap all the technologies, all the ideas that have been presented to you and to update you on how Maxar stands on all of these things. Well, let me refresh your knowledge about Maxar emergence. It was a merger of uh, four different entities. It was an SSL, Radiant Solutions, MDA, and Digital Globe, resulting in a new entity, new company, employing over 6,000 people with an annual revenue of about $2 billion. This is a global operator with uh, customers coming from 70 countries. These are the key clients that we have now and with whom we have different data transmission contract. So the idea is Maxar became a business unit that is capable of not only acquiring space data, but also manufacturing various pieces of equipment, receiving ground infrastructure, satellites, and so on. Let it also be noted that MDA, which is also part of Maxar, is responsible for robot engineering. You know there is a huge manipulator, Canada Arm, designed by MDA, by the way. Actually, it designs other pieces of hardware, for example, Mars rovers. And then we go to expertise and uh, fast data delivery using online services. A few words about space platforms. We're now in, in the process of uh, implementing a program to make sure that Maxar becomes a leader by launching new Legion satellites that will replace Worldview. Apart from that, let's not forget that SSL is a global leader in uh, telecommunications satellites. O over its entire history of uh, 60 years, more than 280 have been launched. 90 are still in operation, so it is an undisputed leader in telecommunications. Maxar has th three platform classes. They ensure orbiting or launching to orbit uh, different satellites. 500 class for Worldview and Legion satellites and other modular platforms we refer to as uh, 1300 class which are used for telecommunications purposes. As I told you, SSL worked on the set on the Legion 
even before the merger and uh, we hope that uh, they will be launched as scheduled. As for the ground systems, responsibility of MDA, a recognized leader in this field of expertise. Digital Globe uh, used to rely on their ground systems. They have around uh, 30 stations around the world, if I'm not mistaken, which delivers great competitive advantages in data delivery. Uh, I think we communicate with our satellites every 45 minutes. We it, we, it could be done more often. In installation of uh, two reception centers is equivalent to one launch. As I told you, robotics is one of the core competencies of Maxar, and I wanted to note new missions that will serve to maintain in-orbit satellites. I briefly heard about one of the missions, a refueling mission to be more exact for Landsat satellite. We are exploring this um, opportunity. We believe it could be um, a good area of business for us. Of course, one must not forget satellite imagery. MAXA, owing to Digital Globe's massive experience, is one of the first to have launched native 30 centimeter resolution satellites with extremely high acquisition rate up to 3 million square kilometers per day. Data has been available since 99. These are quick bird iconas that are no longer in operation, unfortunately, but uh, their legacy, their heritage is still in the archives. And every, everyone can order it. Point 0.3 meter is yesterday's news of course. A new platform, Worldview Legion, is expected to step up our performance for 30 centimeter resolution. We are supplementing a new high definition algorithm that will improve visualization and interpretation properties of Imagery. I mentioned that at the last year's RACOS conference, this algorithm is uh, going through final tests. So we expect to have it soon, so our consumers will be able to access um, higher res data. It is particularly viable for 30 centimeter data. It is also important to know how to process this data, how to, uh, where to store it, and what can be considered valid or not so valid. So we have structural units doing analytics, extracting information layers. One of such information layers examples is a building contours of structures. This is a conquering market as we speak. This algorithm obtains vector information for large areas, millions of square kilometers, under one week. Of course, this is interesting because it allows processing great amount of imagery and deliver data to customers that would take years to produce. As a result, we built the full geospatial database for the whole continent of Australia 
and the building contours were among the principal elements of this project. Analytics, database analytics, perhaps as you could have seen on the previous slide of Radiant Solution, this is a leading company in the field of data analytics based on geospatial data, and uh, it is our core company in making the end products, and their chief goal is to share with the customers the results of analytical data processing, which could be not necessarily geospatial data. It also includes statistical things, and one of the examples would be Facebook which ordered the population maps for Africa, and uh, we shared with them the building contours detected in the areas of interest of that customer. And subsequently, based on statistical information, we built the population maps. It was something they needed to put on the map, the places where hypothetically people reside, but there is no internet to provide them with this and uh, allow them to use Facebook services. Geospatial expertise, this is an, quite an interesting thing, an interesting line of business, but mostly it is popular in the western part of the world. Again, we supply different key expert solutions related to geospatial data. And here I can't say much because the only thing to say is that, again, in the Western world we work based on the standards accepted there and uh, we provide this expert opinion. I must mention the image access direct and online. There's a very good platform, One Atlas. Digital Globe has a similar one. It's called Forge. And it was launched, if I'm not mistaken, two, more than two years ago. It includes the whole archive which exists at the moment. And uh, it has some particularities, of course, of getting access to that archive. Whereas our colleague said that One Atlas has a filter. We ask uh, users to configure their own filter and access and uh, connect them to the systems. Of course, you can do it through OGS services when you can integrate it with almost any software, hopefully also with PhotoMod. I think there should be no difficulty for that. Speaking about the access, simultaneously through that platform, a number of people are working, and this platform is basic for sharing data by the U.S. government. Uh, that about 350,000 users have access to. Now, a few words about the Worldview Legion. As I mentioned, this is a new generation of satellites that will replace Worldview. It will be 0.3 meter resolution satellites so based on new platform with high spatial resolution. As I s mentioned, it is a 500 class platform. The satellites by default will be smaller than our Worldview series, but still we will guarantee the acquisition of the same geospatial positioning accuracy, high spatial resolution, and uh, because it is a satellite, I'm not clear. I cannot tell you how many satellites in the constellation, but the amount of acquired data will keep growing. This is what this satellite looks like. These are the first renders. Now it's in production. In fact, this program is also fully funded by the Maxar money. We are the investor of this program. And as a result, the first 
satellites have been contracted already and they're in production and I hope that by the uh, early 2021 they're going to be launched in space some other pictures and of course the more satellites we have the more data we acquire the archive is uh, made up of more than 100 petabytes it's a lot other people are saying that it's already 110 petabytes already this is a slide that we have when Bill Gates shows the compact disk and shows how much tax can be put on one disk so if we take 100 petabytes there will be 175 kilometers of such disks this is a huge amount of data which one needs to use and uh, we need to find methods of how to capitalize on this and this cloud all makes our data and once digital globe as well were moved from uh, tape to Amazon cloud and we did a special operation to uh, relocate all our data for into the cloud we created special vehicle for that which moved all this uh, tape rec all this tape recording into cloud which has opened floodgates and uh, many companies start to get connected to the cloud which is called GBDX geospatial big data within which partners can create their own algorithms of data processing and one of such algorithms is the mosaic building algorithm of how to build mosaics we call it vivid this is our internal program to create a homogeneous mosaics for the whole planet and uh, with a guaranteed update of this information in other words this is quasi cloudless quasi seamless uh, 0.5 meter resolution for the whole world and it builds on our cloud services cloud platforms when we take the block sampling and the system selects the best images and builds the mosaic out of them what are the advantages of the system first of all because we it's we update it regularly now if I'm not mistaken about 90 percent of all the earth coverage is done the only thing left is Russian Arctic I think will complete it by the end of the year and all the images go through the same go through the same algorithm which includes atmospheric correction uh, stitching and then in form of uh, cut up tiles we supply it to the customers a few words about the atmospheric correction here this is the algorithm that has been validated and checked up there are scientific articles written about it and many customers have moved from manual algorithm which exists in many softwares to our algorithm which has proved that it's more efficient mosaic algorithm there are some examples of it we're not providing it but we are providing re the results of this algorithm importantly we have a plan on how to update this mosaic it's not that we do it once but we update it regularly especially for the in places of high interest on the average the regions I'm talking about large areas like Kazakhstan for instance we has been updated twice already we built the mosaic twice for Kazakhstan last time it was done in November so we take the existing mosaics look at what has changed there in two past years and all the stripes uh, strips that fit it and uh, update the area this is 50 centimeters global coverage 
some of the areas are updated annually. The green color shows that what we use to update it, and others are updated within a few years or upon request. It's 8.5 meter precision and uh, or accuracy, 2.9 percent global coverage. Yet another mosaic for us is the product called Metro 2.1, whose main idea is that we provide customers mosaic coverage for about 6,000 cities all over the world, out of which 3,000 are made with the 30 centimeter resolution. And this mosaic includes only the best images available and uh, we process them and provide them as the ready-to-use product. The, one of the features of this product is that we have guaranteed uh, commitment to update the data once a year. Some of the cities are updated twice a year. And uh, we provide to our customers also 30.3 centimeter meter resolution is provided in high precision e.g. we use a different algorithm for it to improve the visual characteristics of the image. Here you can see the cities which we have commitments, uh, update commitments about. In principle this is an open program. We enjoy adding new areas of interest if there is such a need. Or we change the boundaries of the existing areas and uh, zones of interest. Yes, 0.3 meter resolution uh, in HD sampling. Briefly talking, we take pixel, cut it up into four, and because of this we get an even better quality image. And the mosaic dynamic we also have it in our portfolio. We're talking about the commissioning of mosaic coverage for a particular zone of interest when a customer doesn't like uh, neither meter or vivid. They select the images available for this area and we do mosaic for them. So the, here we're talking about mosaic coverage. Uh, Upon order, it could be 50.5 resolution, 0.3 meter resolution. Globally, without any restrictions whatsoever. Mostly, we're talking about the whole countries, and I must say that the main advantage of this algorithm is the speed of mosaic coverage. You see, Shanghai 2.5 square kilometers Australia or the whole Syria 100,000 square kilometers 8 hours. All of it works in cloud. The system itself allows us and helps us select images for such a coverage and after the algorithm is, has been launched because it's in web services of Amazon they have almost limitless power and capacity there, which allows us to get ready to use product. Here we must note uh, high accuracy, high precision. Recently, colleagues asked me to show an example for the town of Nur Sultan. They asked me what is the positioning precision, as by, the, by specification, is about 8.5 meters, but when they gave them that piece, they have rechecked it by their ground control points, and it turned out that Nur Sultan had the precision of about one meter. So 8.5 uh, meters is the global accuracy that we guarantee for any pixel globally, although in real life, of course, images are much better or much more accurately positioned. And the high resolution, it's always important. 
as a result, I can also mention that Mosaic is available through OGS services and uh, Vimeas and KML through Google Planet and through Esri service. And there are no technical restrictions whatsoever. It's important to simply understand in what interface your company would be working and uh, connect yourself to this mosaic by using one of the services mentioned here. The final summary table, I'm not going to dwell too much on it. If you're interested, you can have a copy of this presentation anyway. We can discuss any parameters from this table, and I'm prepared to discuss some of these things because not always it happens that we have 5% of cloudiness, especially in the equatorial area. But we're trying to get as much data as possible and replace some of the bad quality images with new, beautiful, perfect images. That, I guess, would be the, the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ilya, for a very interesting presentation. Thank you. A lot of interesting things. After listening to your presentation, first of all, now Roscosmos is greatly interested in the Mosaic coverage of the whole territory of Russia. I'm talking about reference coverage with the kind of resolution that you mentioned. So we are prepared to do that. We are going to start a competition between you and Airbus because Airbus is also prepared to share with us the spot six and seven reference coverage. The resolution is less important for us. 0.5 meter would be okay. Even 2.5 meters would be okay for us. So we are going to come. Uh, compete among uh, you are going to compete who is going to sell to us this uh, five meter resolution at the best price in fact we do have such an option we take Vivid and we can roughen it up for any spatial resolution it's no longer going to be 0.5 uh, meter resolution we can roughen out it up and make it two two and a half five meter resolution and the price would of course hinge on that. We are quite flexible about that. Okay, so it's like asking you for a quote. Accept it. Can I ask you yet another question, even two questions? Firstly, the global trend, it's, the question goes for all colleagues, is to build con satellite constellations not for small satellites, like you mentioned, the new platform is 500 kilos, but based on COPSAT. A good example of that would be Planet. With colossal capacities, they can have daily coverage of the whole globe and provide these services. Are you developing your business or are you considering such a possibility? If I'm not mistaken, SSL is uh, Planet's contractor. I think they were the first to do DOI. So the answer to, to that is yes. If uh, updating a constellation to achieve uh, higher spatial resolution is your priority, then it is certainly a possibility. Uh, but we're also looking to have lighter weight satellites with uh, one meter plus resolution, but at the moment we're mostly working on high resolution constellation, but there are no constraints or limitations as to CUMPSAT satellite development. It's just not part of our plan because it entails investments and time efforts. You said you, that uh, you're 
stations deliver four to five minute information reception. Do you understand correctly that it is possible to quickly respond to market driven needs? Yes. I am not at liberty to comment on this directly, but from what I hear, if you need to reprogram your satellite quickly, you can do it. And you can delete all the data obtained earlier, something that haven't even been downloaded. So you delete it and you do another round and collect more information over the area of interest, but it does not happen too often. Any other questions? Only one question. Um, you mentioned that you use the satellites to, together with, face, with Facebook to estimate the number of people in certain territory. Mm. Can you give us more insight how that, uh, that was done? and uh, how accurate that uh, estimate could be. Thanks. Uh, thank you for your question. Indeed, there is information on this project, and it is available in the shape of some presentations. I could request a presentation for you, but to Put it shortly, Facebook uses computer vision. No, we use computer vision to make sure that this mosaic coverages uh, have the buildings or structures identified. Then we need to make sure that this is exactly the building we are after to pinpoint that building with uh, residents. We are mostly talking about African citizens where they live in shacks. So it's important to locate and validate to make sure that this is a habitable shack. But as for the statistical accuracy, I'm not sure. Maybe it was a local partner who delivered uh, information on the average density of people living inside one cabin. I don't know for sure, but if you want me to, I can investigate further. Colleagues, uh, the time is up, really. Thank you, Leah. We're slightly, out s slightly over time.